there are other um, there are some examples of linked libraries that you may be familiar with that, that you'll soon learn about. Uh, for instance, uh, your C++ compiler ships with one. It's uh, the C++ standard library. So uh, the compiler itself isn't um, the only part of C++ as it turns out. There's also a, um, a library that keeps you from reinventing the wheel. So that's pretty useful. And um, if you're interested in writing video games, then you might have heard of Simple Direct Media Layer, uh, or you may have heard it as its acronym for SDL. And then if you're interested in GUI development, you may have heard of a library named Qt. And in fact, um, even some uh, smartphones, uh, any of the smartphones that run MAMO, uh, which is usually uh, a Nokia product, will use Qt. So, um, there are just a couple of rules for linking. The first of which is that um, uh, you can't uh, link together two translation units that contain the same symbol, and the reason for this is largely because there's no way for the linker to be able to tell which symbol it should use. And uh, the compiler can't reasonably um, determine this either, and so the linker has to be the one that checks for this. And then, um, if you take a translation unit and compile it under one compiler, and then you compile another translation unit under another compiler, then you can't expect to link the object code successfully. Um, if you take those two object files. Sometimes um, you can do this, but it's not something the standard prescribes. And there are a whole bunch of issues to contend with that we won't go in, that the people who wrote um, the standard just decide that it was just too much hassle, and that um, there would um you wouldn't be able to guarantee much anyway and so um finally of course if you're linking an executable then all the symbols have to be defined because otherwise how is the program going to know how to uh actually uh perform its duty so um now i wanted to uh to look into actually getting um a program going and um, there's just a couple of things we need to know about, really just one before we start, and that's the main function. Main is what's called an entry point, and this main function is called whenever um, whenever the program starts, um, after some housekeeping is performed. So. Um, you have uh, two forms of it that you can use. Uh, you have main with um, with no arguments, and those are for programs where you really don't care to take in arguments from the command line. And then uh, we have this other form of main, which uh, we'll probably discuss when we talk about pointers. Um, and those are for programs to where you do want to work with command line arguments. And so there's a protocol with main that um, you return zero if the program uh, was performed successfully. Otherwise, you return some non-zero value. And this gets passed to the operating system, which can then handle it however it likes. So um, a lot of people at this point would do hello world. But I think Hello World doesn't force us to really think about how we're going to write the program. And so I wanted to do something where we could come up with the plan instead. And why would you even want to bother? Well, um, it first of all helps you determine um, what the goals for your program are and um, what its correct behavior should be. And um, as a corollary to this, it also um, gives you criteria by which you can decide whether or not there's a bug in your program. Um, and so um, my example is actually based on an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. If you haven't been able to tell by now, I'm a 
pretty hardcore trucking and um it's it's based off of one of my favorite episodes uh called Chain of Command and what happens in this episode is a Cardassian named Ghoul Madrid captures Captain Picard and um decides that he's going to torture him and so as a form of psychological torture he says well I'll set you free as long as you lie about the number of lights that are in the room and so Gold Madrid says, uh, say that there are five lights in the room, and then um, I'll let you go. Uh, but Picard may be uh, seeing that it's a trick, and that he's torturing him, um, says, well, there are only four lights, you know. And um, we might be able to say then that if Gold Madrid claims that there are end lights, then Picard will, of course, say that there are N minus one lights. Of course, this isn't too terribly uh, logically sound, but it does make for a pretty fun example, so we're going to do it anyway. And we want to actually print out this conversation to the screen. So, um, first of all, we have some boilerplate code here. It just, um, Everything from here to here allows us to get what we need to uh, print out to the screen. We'll probably discuss this more in later episodes so that you have more of an idea of what's going on. But for now, just take it on faith that uh, this allows us to print to the screen. And then um, we have the real meat of our program, which is um, this main function. And so... Um, well, first of all, um, we need the number of lights that we want to use, and let's think about the data sum. Can we have less than zero lights? Well, no. Um, in fact, it, um, uh, this program would actually fail if we had zero lights, but um, for most cases it works. Um, so we're going to say that lights is an unsigned quantity, and because um, in the original episode, uh, Gold Madrid says there are five. We'll say there are five lights here, too. So we're going to assign five to lights so, in its declaration. And then we want to print out how many lights, um, or Gold Madrid asking how many lights there are. And um, Picard will say, um, well, there's one less light than the... Um, number specified in lights. So you can go up here and actually replace um, five with whatever number you want as long as it's not zero and um, it'll work. And so um, uh, you might have noticed here that um, for these string literals we have spaces um, on the right end of the first and on the beginning of the second and that's because um, um, those spaces wouldn't get inserted otherwise so um, what we would end up with is um, our four lights in this case being one word if we didn't have those anyway um, now that our program has successfully run remember we return zero here and so um, that's pretty much our program and um, this is what our output would look like if we were to run it on the command line so um, I'd uh, also like to mention that while it's outside the scope of this video uh, I was thinking about uh, maybe providing a supplementary video that would help everybody get started um, um, perhaps by telling you how to install certain in compilers and also um, uh, some tips on using them. But again, it'll be a separate video if I do this. And then um, finally, well, in the next episode, uh, we're going to look further into uh, the kind of programming we just did, which is called procedural programming, and we're going to get an idea of what that is and then we're actually going to learn about um, what we could do to actually write a better program and we can do this through both code reuse and something called namespaces so until that time I hope that you enjoyed this video 
and uh, everybody have a good one.